All right, Mr. Ahmed here. Uh, game plan for today is to just do a brief overview of everything we discussed with our quadrilaterals before we uh, left for our break. Uh, we're gonna go over parallelograms and then our special parallelograms and how they relate to one another. So our essential question is, what is a parallelogram and how do I determine what type of parallelogram each shape is? So starting off, parallelogram is a quadrilateral. means it has four sides and it also has two pairs of parallel sides. I'm gonna use the symbol for parallel rather than write it out. Um, the parallelogram also has some special features. Uh, some things we wanna keep in mind is we know that the opposite sides are congruent The opposite angles are congruent. The diagonals bisect one another. And finally, the consecutive angles are supplementary. So I'm going to draw this out in some diagrams. The opposite sides congruent means that they are across from each other. We'll indicate that with tick marks. The opposite angles will also mark with tick marks. They're congruent. The diagonals go from corner to corner. The first diagonal in this case is longer than the second one. They are not the same length. So when I divide them up, we have four segments. Two pairs are congruent. And finally, the consecutive angles share a side. So I'm gonna call this one X. The opposite angles also X because they're congruent. And we also have a Y and a Y. In this case, x plus y has to equal 180 degrees because the consecutive ones, the one that share a side, they're supplementary. And that kind of covers our basic parallelogram. From here, we're gonna go over our special parallelograms. The first one is a rectangle. A rectangle is a parallelogram. with four right angles. Um, since it's a parallelogram, it has all the characteristics of a parallelogram. The opposite sides are congruent, the opposite angles are congruent, the diagonals bisect each other, and the consecutive angles are also supplementary. Now, for this diagram here, I'm just gonna mark each angle with a box because it's 90 degrees. Okay. Now some special characteristics of a rectangle is the diagonals are congruent. So, I'm going to draw this one a little bit bigger. The distance from A to C is the same as the distance from B to to D. And since it's also a parallelogram, these diagonals are also bisected. So all four of these little segments would have the same length. And that's really the only extra characteristic we have for a rectangle. Next step is a rhombus. It's also a parallelogram. and it has four congruent sides. So, in a diagram, it's still kind of tilted, looking like a parallelogram, except all four sides are the same length. It 
also has some special characteristics. The first one is the diagonals are perpendicular. Going to use the symbol for perpendicular or upside down T. So in our diagram with a rhombus, the diagonals intersect at a right angle because they are perpendicular. So that's 90 degrees. With our right angle, we'll also have right triangles. So you might have to use Pythagorean's theorem to find some missing pieces. Finally, the diagonals also bisect the angles. So, let me draw this diagram here. I know that one doesn't quite look like a rhombus, but I'm gonna mark it with four finger on sides. So, since the diagonals bisect the angles, the whole angle is cut in half, therefore the two little parts are equal. And that happens with the other pair of angles as well. They're different sized, so I'm gonna use two tick marks for that pair. And that really takes care of our characteristics for a rhombus. The last special parallelogram we have is the most special quadrilateral, and that is a square. So a square is also a parallelogram with four right angles and four congruent sides. So, drawing it off, four right angles, that makes it a rectangle. Four congruent sides also makes it a rhombus. Therefore, a square has all the characteristics of the rhombus, the rectangle, and the parallelogram. Finally, the last thing I want to leave you with is just a brief little flow chart so we can understand these characteristics. So for our flow chart, up at the very top is the most basic quadrilateral, just a quadrilateral. It has four sides. Going down, we then have parallelograms. And the parallelograms have all the characteristics we just discussed. Opposite sides parallel, I'm gonna abbreviate here. Opposite sides congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. The diagonals bisect. Each other. And the consecutive angles are supplementary. I'm going to abbreviate supplementary. So, that's the parallelogram. Now, in our parallelograms, we also have rectangles and the rectangles, diagonals are congruent. And also from the parallelograms, we had a rhombus. The rhombus had four congruent sides. The diagonals are perpendicular. And the diagonals bisect the angles.
Okay. Finally, if the shape is both a rectangle and a rhombus, it is a square. So a square is always a rhombus. It's always a rectangle. When I start at the bottom and work my way up, all these characteristics will always be true. So a square has all the properties of the parallelogram, all the properties of the quadrilateral. Rectangles, also parallelograms, also quadrilaterals. If I go down the flow chart, a quadrilateral is only sometimes a square. A quadrilateral is only sometimes a rectangle, sometimes a rhombus. If I start at the bottom and work my way up, things are always true. Okay? Top going down, sometimes true. The tricky ones, a rectangle and a rhombus. A rectangle is only sometimes a rhombus, and that's if it's a square. I will leave you with that for today. As we move forward, we'll be going into trapezoids and kites.